by the time uh, as shown in the agenda. And uh, without further ado, I would like to give the floor to Magali, Magali from ICP Iraq, uh, to welcome you. Magali, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, uh, Tommy, and uh, good morning, everybody. And it's very nice to see that everybody is connected on, on time. So I will be very brief so that uh, we can progress according to the, the, the agenda of the meeting. And on behalf of uh, SCP RAC, which stands for Regional Activity Center for Social Consumption and Production, uh, welcome to this uh, capitalization uh, workshop. We look forward to uh, create some synergies with uh, all of you. Thank you, Magali. Thank you very much. Also, allow me to introduce myself. I'm Homais Lahoyani and I work for MIO. MIO is a federation of 133 NGOs from all over the Mediterranean, at least for those of you who don't know us. But I think that more or less we are all very close collaborators within this meeting and it's a really a joy to see you all. So I would like now to ask Ivana, Irena, from the Croatian Ministry of Economy and Sustainable Development to welcome you. Irena? Thank you, Tommy. Uh, dear participants from all over the Mediterranean and beyond, on behalf of the Croatian Ministry of Economy and Sustainable Development and its Department for Sea and Coastal Protection that is responsible in Croatia for the project implementation, let us wish you all a very warm welcome at the beginning as well as fruitful capitalization to the event. The Croatian side would like to thank for the initiative and collaboration in preparing this meeting to Mediterranean Information Office for Environment, Culture and Sustainable Development from Athens to Tommy and to Regional Activity Center for Sustainable Consumption and Production from Barcelona to Magali. And of course, to the main scientific project partner, University of Siena, as well as to leading project partner, Italian National Institute for Environmental Protection and Research from Italy. And what to say, uh, despite the pandemic circumstances and uh, virtual operating mode, we are quite sure that this event is going to be successful today and will result with further actions and initiatives in strengthen our close collaboration achieved so far. Thank you all. We wish you a very useful and pleasant event. Thank you. Thank you, Irena, for these very inspiring words. And now I would like to give the floor to Christina, our scientific coordinator, to say a few words. Christina? Yes. Thank you very much, Tommy, and thank you to the participant to stay with us for the next two hours for this first capitalization workshop. And I'm talking on behalf of the University of Siena, that is the scientific coordinator of the Interior Plastic Buster Initiative. And one of our main goals also today will be try to link together all the Mediterranean partners from the north and the south coast in the same language that will be to fight the marine litter on marine protected area. So thank you very much. And I hope very much you enjoy the meeting. Thank you, Christina. Thank you very much. And uh, now uh, we will make a small change in the agenda and we will uh, start with session one on setting the scene when it comes to the policy advances. And we will give the floor to Georg Hanke. Georg, are you with us? Yes, hello, good morning. Good morning and welcome. Feel free to share your screen. And uh, I hope that we won't delay you too much because uh, Georg has another obligation. But we are very, very happy that he has managed to join, I think for the first time, our Plastic Busters uh, event. So the floor is yours, Georg. Yes, thank you very much. Good, uh, good morning, everybody. So I'm now trying to share my screen. Which is currently not possible. Um, I don't know, maybe Tommy, may I ask you to, to share the presentation? Because here it doesn't seem it's working. 
Tell me I can do that if you want. Okay, well, then thanks a lot, because otherwise we might delay further. So, yeah, first of all, <clears throat> indeed, it's a pity that uh, it's the first time that I'm um, actually, at, at not really, but virtually attending a Plastic Busters um, meeting, uh, but I've always been following closely and was informed and my congratulations to all the progress that has been made. Um, and... Um, yeah, today I would just give very briefly an overview on uh, uh, what is happening uh, from the MSFD side, Marine Strategy Framework Directive. Um, so please, we to the next slide. So just the very basics, but I'm sure you know them all. Uh, the role of the MSFD is uh, that it's the environmental pillar of the EU maritime policy, so it's holistic. It has 11 descriptors. And uh, number 10 of this happens to be the one on marine litter. Um, so there we are working very closely together with the regional sea conventions, uh, with the um, marine in the shared marine basins, with the EEA and many other stakeholders. And we have a very successful collaboration with Emotnet from DG Mare as a data portal to, uh, to collect and to manage data. And uh, the MSFD Technical Group on Marine Litter is uh, yeah, quite an important um, forum there to discuss and to um, agree on uh, guidance and to um, yeah, move on with the technical issues we have. And of course, some of you are also present there. And Tommy is definitely a very one of the pillars of the TGML. Next slide, please. So this is just very briefly to show you where we are with some of the topics. Um, you, I think you know that we have been collecting uh, beach or rather coastline litter data from EU member states. And we have just now, a few days ago, finished the uh, collection of the second batch of data. We are now at a total of 7,715 surveys um, across all Europe from 2012 to 2020. And what is particularly nice is that we are now looking at a sort of stable um, income of around 1,000 surveys per year, which gives some kind of sustainability to the process. Next slide, please. So um, what we have done so far as outcome from this data collection was that uh, uh, as a first work item, we have been looking at which are the most frequent items occurring in these uh, data sets. And this was actually a main major input to the uh, development of the so-called single-use plastic directive. I always say so-called because it's also uh, including uh, provisions for uh, uh, fishing gear made of plastic. But I think this is a, like we call it the sub-directive, that's fine too. Um, and then we have been able to define baselines. So uh, 2015 and 16 on different spatial levels across EU, which have been the basis to develop thresholds and um, which finally then in 2000, uh, so yeah, last, last year actually have been approved. So now we're looking at a, a reference value or limit value of 20 liter items per 100 meter of coastline. And this really enables now the member states to work towards good environmental status. Uh, mentioning there that we would like to have less than 200 liter, than 20 liter items a coastline, but it's something where we can work to. If you like to consult the reports, uh, there's a link uh, further down on the slide. Next slide, please. So the current situation is, and if we look at uh, the 2015-16 data, um, you can see the situation across uh, the different regions, and you can see them in relation to the limit value. So you can see there's quite a lot of work to be done. Um, and the next steps are actually to discuss and develop intermediate targets as a practical means to move in the right direction. And of course, we also need to consider transboundary litter transport, which is currently being done already through modeling efforts. Next slide, please. And another very important topic, of course, is uh, the further development of guidance. I think you're very much aware of the, the current guidance document, and uh, we are in the process of updating it. Um, it has, we had hoped to have this done 
while earlier, but we also have to see it, that we're dealing with a moving target there. Um, and what is very nice that through the TGML, through the discussions we're having there, through the fact that we have involved scientific communities to quite some extent in these discussions, um, we are quite convinced that people who implement MZFD are aware on what are the options. And so we are already updating while we are doing this. And uh, we will have now in a few days a um, meeting of the technical group on marine litter, where we will discuss how we can finally come to the consolidated uh, next version of the guidance. Uh, we have a lot of uh, input through experiences from the beach or litter work. Uh, we have now a background report on floating macro litter based on two um, workshops and uh, the work from the METSI litter project. Uh, we have made some advances on seafloor litter um, and we are still waiting, but I have to say this is one thing where I'm a little bit of a bottleneck, the MSFD position paper on micro litter, and then also we need to advance on the impact monitoring on ingestion and entanglement. Next slide, please. Uh, and then very important in the context of guidance for monitoring, and I know this has been also a topic uh, in the plastic busters already, is uh, the joint list of litter categories, which finally will enable us to compare data, to analyze them, um, because it's really not a rocket science to, to identify the items. But uh, unfortunately, we had, and we're still having the situation that different schemes are used. So now we have a hierarchical system which allows that the data should be comparable on a large scale. Um, and now recently a coding system has been developed um, and a photo guide to um, yeah, be able to uh, yeah, do unambiguous identification of the litter items. Next slide, please. Uh, this is just an example of the next steps we are doing. This one is on micro litter baselines. So we have made a survey on uh, available data sets in Europe, and you can see they're quite numerous. And we will now start, or we have actually started to collect the data on floating micro litter, and we will then uh, continue with sediment micro litter and move on. I mean, it's clear that uh, the data sets will not be fully comparable. From, from one data set to the other, but we have to start somehow and to find out how we can actually come to baselines. Next slide, please. And this is a bit of an outlook. So we are continuing to develop baselines, thresholds, and then in the next step, trends uh, for the different litter types and environmental matrices. And the very crucial thing is really to link the monitoring with measures and um, to link the matrix with concrete actions which can be taken and then hopefully following the reduction, which we should see in the monitoring if it's set up the right way and if the measures are working. So um, this is really the, the core of the further development of the work. And I think that also the um, uh, marine protection, protected areas are playing a really great role in there um, because in theory, the marine protected areas wouldn't be a source of marine litter. I know there are some cases <laughs> where this is different, uh, but they can play also a very important role as sentinel um, because where often the litter is imported there. So, and of course, this also goes sort of hand in hand with the current plans on the biodiversity strategy. You know that the um, that about 30% of EU marine waters should be protected in future and 10% um, of all marine waters should be uh, under very strong protection. So there's definitely a role to, to play here in terms of um, having the monitoring set up right uh, in the right way. And then I, uh, I'm almost closing by mentioning the zero pollution action plan that has been adopted very recently. And you might know that there are also very ambitious uh, um, elements in there regarding uh, marine litter. So as the regarding plastic litter at sea and also microplastic released into the environment. So uh, this underpins again also the need to find out where the sources are, close them down and uh, verify by monitoring in the environment. Um, yeah, and so overall the quantitative evidence is needed um, 
to implement the right effect and effective measures so that we can move towards good environmental status of EU, but also uh, in the neighboring seas. So thanks a lot. That's it. Next slide is the thanks, exactly. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Georg, for this uh, great presentation that uh, introduced uh, uh, in a very short time uh, the very important uh, framework provided no, under the Mine uh, Strategy Framework Directive on Mine Litter. Thank you for making the link no, between the well, the monitoring and the, the importance no, to link it with uh, clear measures. And this is something that is also uh, that we're also trying to do now on the Plastic Buster, trying to tackle all the different aspects uh, from uh, on, on my litter, from monitoring to assessment and, and uh, mitigation uh, measures. So uh, thank you very much for uh, having uh, made a, slow, a short slot in your busy agenda of today to, to present us and introduce us this framework. Now we are going to move um, on the uh, framework, the policy framework that is provided well more at the Mediterranean uh, level. So we, I would like to welcome uh, Christos Joachimidis uh, from the UDEP uh, Mediterranean Action Plan Coordinating Unit uh, that will uh, introduce us the, the work that is being done under the marine, the Barcelona Convention uh, regarding uh, marine litter. So Christos, you have the floor. Thank you, Magali. Uh, very, I'm very happy to be with you. Um, I think I have uh, followed most or not, if not all, the, the Plastic Buster events since it's in session phase and I'm very happy to, to see how this project is evolving and uh, uh, how important contribution uh, the project has on marine litter advances also in the Mediterranean. Um, I think that I have successfully shared my screen. So please, Tom, or uh, Magali, to confirm that you can see my screen. Yes, can you just make it full screen? Yes, okay. no, perfect. No, okay, yeah. thank you very much. Uh, so I'm, I'm sure that you all know, and all the participants of this nice meeting uh, knows about, uh, are aware, well aware of the regional plan on marine litter. And uh, here we present a schematic uh, diagram on the on the advances. And I would like mainly to focus that uh, this period is a very important period for us, for the whole for the whole whole unit map system, as we are uh, upgrading the the regional plan on marine litter management in the Mediterranean, uh, expected to 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 happen in uh, expected to to be discussed and officially approved during the COP22 in Antalya in this this December in 2021, and of course the the, the next uh, big uh, thing on marine litter is the the 2023 MedQSR uh, report that uh, the whole system is uh, is working on, and of course it 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 also aims to to has to have a very important uh, element on on marine litter. The regional plan, of course, includes a series of uh, measures uh, focusing on different aspects like integration, reduction, prevention, removal, disposal, assessment, of course, monitoring and research, science, guidelines, cooperation, assistance, awareness raising, education, stakeholder participation, including civil society, and uh, a bureaucratic uh, but still very important component on the reporting so that we have some feedback from the countries on uh, what has been uh, achieved so far. Uh, in terms of achievements, uh, I would like to focus on the developments on, uh, on the development, the implementation of the national monitoring programs, which are in place for marine litter for, for all Mediterranean countries. Uh, I would like also to focus on the very good uh, work I believe that we're doing on on uh, improving uh, IMAP candidate indicator 24, uh, including the um, uh, the latest product is the the regional uh, the, the regional um, uh, report the, the regional strategy for monitoring CI 24, and based on this strategy, we are going to to start piloting the the implement the development and the implementation of the national monitoring programs. We have a big, a big work ongoing for the updating of the baseline values that were adopted in 2016 and the establishment of threshold values. Uh, we have, we are very close uh, to, to have uh, those values adopted for CI22, so for bits per meter. This will be discussed during the Metpol focal point session in July, and we are currently working in uh, 
in updating the baseline values and proposing the threshold values for CI23, mainly focusing on seafloor uh, and seafloor marine litter and floating microplastics. Of course, we have the 19 national action plans and programs of measures in place. Uh, we have the phasing out of single-use plastic bags in uh, approximately 17 countries with several activities uh, carried out and coordinated by, by SCP-RAG. We have uh, a big set of guidelines, so far five, uh, for adopted beads, fishing for litter, phasing out single-use plastic bags and two guidelines for the PRF for the port reception facilities. Uh, and uh, a new guideline is under development on phasing out single-use, uh, uh, sorry, it's SUP, single-use plastic items of priority. Then we are working on recycling. We have been working on numerous pilots and uh, uh, also to engage the, the civil society and uh, generally the stakeholders at the Mediterranean level through the regional co cooperation platform. Last but not least, the, the development of the regional node is uh, an important development and uh, we're now working to, to make it more interactive and to, to be able to, to attract and to, to host as much information as possible uh, at the Mediterranean level. Regarding the upgrade of the, of the regional plan, uh, this was mandated by COP 2021. 20, sorry, this was mandated by COP 2021 by COP 21 in Naples in 2019, and uh, so far we have the two expert groups uh, organized for uh, uh, dedicated to update the, the regional plan, and the, the regional plan was uh, also discussed in into the during the medical focal point in May. And uh, the next, uh, let's say, in terms of uh, institutional uh, setup and sequence of, of approvals is to, to be discussed and approved by the MAP focal point in September. And hopefully when we will reach uh, December 2021 to be approved by, uh, by the contracting parties of the Barcelona Convention. Uh, the, this, uh, up, this update of the regional plan is quite ambitious. It includes numerous elements, and I would like to, to, to focus on some of them, like to phase out single-use plastic items, so do, to go a step beyond the single-use plastic bags, to set targets for plastic recycling and other waste items. We have already a commitment from the Naples Declaration, uh, and uh, we, would, we are now, uh, and the countries are aiming to integrate these uh, this, uh, ambitious targets into the, uh, into the regional plan to introduce environmental taxes, to promote new technologies for the removal of marine litter, to strengthen sanctions in case of non-compliance, uh, include uh, in the spam is measures to combat marine litter, uh, to reduce packaging, to promote voluntary agreements with industry, to strengthen measures related to, to sustainable consumption and production programs, programs and to introduce a concrete measure on microplastic reduction. So this, uh, these are elements on top of the existing measures. So in terms of work and uh, you know of, uh, uh, how much we have to work together with the countries and how much have been done at the national level, you can understand that uh, there's a lot of work to, to be done in, in the years to come. Um, uh, regarding the 2023 MetQSR, and I will uh, focus a bit on monitoring and assessment of uh, in the framework of the Barcelona Convention and uh, its integrated uh, monitoring and assessment program. Uh, the, we have some processes, some main processes that, and milestones that are, they are, are ongoing, like the negotiation and agreement on the scales of monitoring, the, the development of methodological tools and assessment criteria for integrated assessment of JERS, the full implementation of national IMAPs, the operational, operationalization of the IMAP info system, and the relevant modules that they have pre been prepared to to, to, to host the data from the Mediterranean countries, to develop and implement the monitoring protocols and data quality assurance and the quality control for all IMAP indicators, and to, to provide technical assistance to, 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 to support the contracting parties. Uh, also effort is, uh, and attention is given on outreach and partnerships because we need to uh, to create big networks, big monitoring networks around the Mediterranean. And of course, the, the cooperation and coordination is really essential. Um, in terms of, uh, of the monitoring and assessment, uh, we aim in having a reliable assessment of the state of the marine environment. The 2017 MedQSR has already provided uh, a very good basis. We had also the, uh, the report prepared by Plan Bleb, the SOD, the State of Environment Report, 
and then the 2023 metpsr we we hope that will be the uh, the more advanced uh, of these reports especially for marine litter uh, we need also to focus on reliable and cost effective monitoring on the state for the, of the state of the marine environment <clears throat> this includes optimal monitoring practices but also we're working in the so-called joint monitoring so uh, uh, how the countries could uh, could implement monitoring activities in one go for more than one uh, common indicator. Uh, of course, the quality assurance and quality control schemes to be applied on, on the data that will receive at national level are crucial, and also the data management and information portal. In terms of uh, my last slide, we'll focus a bit on marine litter. Uh, we have the national IMAPs in place, as you all know, and um, Till 2023, we would like to advance in making this uh, this pro these programs fully operational, uh, generating data and feeding data into the info info system, and uh, also to advance on the joint monitoring. Uh, we have uh, IMAP gu guidance fact sheets for all IMAP uh, common uh, indicators. Data standards and data dictionaries are in place for uh, uh, for beach ma macro litter, seafloor macro litter, and floating microplastics. We have uh, a set of monitoring protocols. Uh, we have a monitoring protocol, uh, for, I mean, for beach marine litter and for seafloor marine, marine litter. We are now uh, finalizing a monitoring plot protocol for, for floating microplastics. We have uh, a, an intercalibration exercise for the uh, Mediterranean laboratories for seafloor macro litter, to, uh, which is under development. And we have the online working group working on this. Uh, and we aim during the next biennium, so during 2022 and 2023, to complete the set of protocols in line with the IMAP requirements. Uh, as I told you, we have the IMAP info system modules uh, already in place for most indicators. And uh, uh, as soon as the, I mean, the, the methodological uh, aspects uh, mature, we aim in developing additional ones. We have updated the list of bits litter items to, to reflect the COVID uh, those items that are coming now from COVID-19. I will. I won't say more about the baseline and technical value because I believe that I have uh, properly explained them. Regarding the op the candidate indicator, uh, as I've told you, we have the regional operation strategy in place. Protocols and trainings have been organized during the past years, and now we aim in developing national monitoring programs and to to test them uh, in a way that those monitoring programs are feeding data into the IMAP uh, info system. Uh, a big thank to the online working group on marine litter uh, with, uh, participant for, with participants from seven countries. They have been helping us tremendously in, in progressing uh, on the aspect on marine litter. And uh, one last comment and uh, information is that we are working in, uh, in preparing an assessment for the marine litter hotspot areas uh, with a particular focus in the Adriatic. But now we are in the phase of compiling all the data that we have received and we aim in, in creating a very uh, uh, thorough analysis in, in this regard. Uh, having said that, I would like to thank you for your kind attention. I remain at your disposal to, to respond to your queries and wishing you all the best. Thank you. Thank you very much, Christos, for uh, explaining us all the, the, the important work that is uh, being done under the Barcelona Convention uh, framework. Indeed, if you have any question, please, uh, you can write in the chat, and Somi is, is following uh, the chat to whether answer the question or ask it at, at the end. Um, now I would like to give the floor to uh, Alessandra Sensi uh, from uh, the Union for the Mediterranean. Helen, uh, Alessandra is uh, the head of sector on environment and, and blue economy, and she has been uh, supporting uh, plastic busters since the very, very beginning, mm -hmm. uh, because now, well, Plastic Buster is a label project from the Union for the Mediterranean. Uh, so I would like to invite uh, Alessandra to explain us what, what to set the, the scene no, at the regional level regarding uh, the, the efforts uh, of uh, UFM uh, to support uh, marine litter. So Alessandra, you have the floor. Thank you very much, uh, Magali. Thank you very much, uh, everybody. Actually, it's a great honor to be here with you today. Uh, and it's really a great honor to celebrate uh, uh, an event like this, which indeed, uh, finally, as we discussed many years ago, really enables us to capitalize at the benefit of the entire Mediterranean and all the uh, impressive results, let's say, achieve uh, the plastic passers. 
we have in a certain way invested ourselves, as you mentioned, Magali, on uh, plastic busters years ago, uh, trusting that uh, all these uh, important outcomes would have been uh, coming out. We see it as an important uh, process, of course, with a long way forward still, uh, but of course, I mean, uh, fueled uh, by uh, projects which are uh, crucial um, engines, let's say, for the process to go on. So let me share uh, with you a very uh, short, actually, presentation on uh, where we stand at uh, the level of the Union for the Mediterranean, and uh, in particular, let's say more, uh, the policy developments that we have been having over uh, the past months. First of all, let's say marine litter is a cross-cutting, of course, uh, um, theme among uh, uh, many different, let's say, dossier managed at the level of the Union for the Mediterranean. In February of this year, we had actually the adoption of a very ambitious ministerial declaration by the 42 UFM countries on sustainable blue economy. These are all the priorities. It's an expanded, uh, an enormously expanded set of uh, joint priorities that the 42 countries want to tackle. And of course, marine litter and uh, marine litter shows as one of these uh, important ones. The declaration together, of course, uh, with the challenges of ensuring, of course, an LTC, a benefit to all, address also the sustainable recovery from uh, the COVID uh, crisis together or with, the, um, let's say, um, the transversal target, which is actually among the main uh, challenges that the UFM will look at, at creating, of course, also sustainable uh, uh, jobs and, uh, let's say, enabling condition for uh, uh, a high level, uh, a high quality of life in uh, the region. However, at this precise point in time, we are actually coming from this important ministerial declaration. We are moving also towards another one, which is strongly interlinked which is the one on environment and climate tech, uh, action, which has been in a certain way waiting a bit more because of uh, the crisis in the sense that given the historical time, there was a strong willingness to have it in uh, physical presence. So for now, it's set actually to take place on the 4th and 5th of October in uh, Egypt. Just in a few days' time, we will reconvene with all the countries to, uh, let's say, discuss uh, the final uh, uh, text. Among various things, uh, um, it tackles also the fiscal and economic measures, with, uh, especially, let's say, in the case of marine litter, would be uh, relevant, as, of course, I mean, the links with academia and private sector um, in order, let's say, to uh, set concrete mitigation action in place. We also discussed and presented, let's say, plastic busters on the occasion of the last fifth uh, uh, environment task force so just a few days ago. Um, on that occasion, we have been actually more clearly also linking uh, marine uh, litter and uh, plastic, uh, looking at this uh, land and sea, let's say, interface interaction within the broader uh, UFM environment agenda, which is called the Green Environment Agenda. 2030 Green Armed Agenda, and as you see, let's say, uh, marine litter is transversal to all the three thematic, uh, thematic axes that we are tackling. One more focus on green, uh, circular, and socially, let's say, inclusive economy. The other one more strictly, let's say, on pollution itself, while the other one is indeed on ecosystem and natural resource, so let's say, management and restoration. So again, all the work that Plastic Busters and PA is carrying out together with the other twin uh, project common are indeed uh, uh, tackling uh, directly the three axes. This is just to show that, uh, um, again, I mean, for us, what is very, very important is, is these interlinkages, land, sea, and also regional, let's say, coordination among the different, let's say, action carried out. So here you find all the very many, let's say, uh, sorry, all the, I'm sorry, um, all the very many, let's say, uh, regional um, actions that are being carried out at the moment, uh, where we try to ensure complementarity, dialogue, and indeed uh, coordination. 
Uh, this is just to say again that for us, uh, Plastic Busters is a process supported by, as I said, key projects. Uh, we look at the region as one. So for us, it was very, very important indeed, to move to this uh, capitalization stage uh, so as to ensure a transfer and an exchange, actually, on uh, the results uh, uh, achieved. We are just at the start, actually, of this important uh, process. And we even thank uh, very much, actually, the uh, Interact Med Joint uh, Secretariat for having been so receptive and open, especially in view of the next, uh, let's say, programming to uh, involve, include, uh, and uh, um, ensure the participation of the countries of the South. Uh, LANCI, we already mentioned, coordination at regional level as well, but uh, uh, this is another important point, the convergence. This is what we uh, try to reach, let's say, within uh, the region, convergence around the shared priorities, and obviously marine litter is one of those, but also, let's say, convergence of efforts and funding uh, in years where, of course, I mean, uh, the, there are probably less resources available for uh, that. Um, in addition, we are uh, trying, of course, I mean, together with all the partners to put together, let's say, a paper. Initially, we call it policy paper. More or less, the idea is indeed to not only uh, tackle the policy level, but also to set the path on the way forward based on all the results achieved so far. I'd like also to link with another process that we are currently running and it's very timely because it's just happening now we are moving towards the un summit on sustainable food system we organized together with fao with cm with prima and uh, one planet, two Mediterranean dialogues. One was on the 27th of April, and the other one, a high level, will be actually on Monday next uh, week. This is actually to tackle all, uh, let's say, the uh, message or recommendation to be delivered at the summit itself, uh, which will take place uh, in September. And of course, I mean, uh, sustainable food from the sea is particularly important uh, within these uh, Mediterranean dialogues. Uh, we have uh, just set up actually the environment uh, page at the UFM. It took a bit of time, some years, but finally we have it. So for all those that are interested, here uh, we are and you can get uh, more uh, information. Thank you very much and thank you very much for um, giving us some more space really to describe uh, where we stand at the moment at the UFM. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Alessandra, for providing us the overview on, on how uh, UFM is supporting no, different aspects on, related to, uh, to marine litter. And thank you again for the continuous uh, support uh, to the Plastic Buster initiatives. So now we had uh, well a great overview no, of the, the scene, the policy scene. So no, regarding we had introduction of the efforts at the EU level, at the Barcelona Convention, level and a UFM uh, level. So this is a very important context for the for the project and for the discussion later on. And uh, now, before uh, moving into the well, presenting you uh, the the result achieved so far by by the by the project, I would like uh, to invite uh, Francesca Marcato, uh, who is the project manager from the Interregmed Joint Secretariat, following very closely. Uh, the plastic uh, buster MPA project to to give us a few uh, introducing uh, remarks. So Francesca, you have the floor. Thank you, Magali. Uh, thank you. Uh, first of all, thank you for the organization of this event. And uh, from Joint Secretariat of Interagmet Program, we are really happy about the achievements reached far by Plastic Busters and PAs. And uh, personally, I'm really uh, happy to closely follow this project. Um, as program, we, uh, as you know, we have founded up to now some key projects that deal with, uh, with Marine Litter. And Plastic Buster and PAs uh, has been able to capitalize on these previous projects and uh, be able to build on existing results, going a step further. Uh, and covering the entire cycle of management uh, of marine litter. And that's 
why it's really interesting for us, for the program. And we are really also uh, enthusiastic about the first results coming from the uh, monitoring activity and the mitigation action that have just started now. Uh, the program would like uh, in the future to reinforce uh, this approach. And I, I join also the, what has, it, has been said by Alessandra Sensi in the sense that we would like to push for a more cross-cutting and cross-sectoral approach, having as main objective the transition towards a circular and sustainable economy and paying attention to the prevention. So not only to uh, monitoring and mitigation action, but really focus on prevention, um, able to, to support capacity building actions, but also improving more sustainable uh, industrial processes, let's say. And um, at the same time, we would like also, uh, as you know, in this programming period, we have uh, focused more on protected areas. And, but we would like to enlarge our uh, the, the area of impact, and we would like to, to take into consideration this interaction, lens interaction. Um, and so to have more, uh, to focus on more uh, polluted areas, um, taking into account also not the sea, but also fresh water. Uh, so, uh, and of course, we would like to continue to improve this coordination with other programs, with other initiatives, and Plastic Buster MPAs was really in support of the Interagamed program in the sense that has uh, supported also the synergies with the Uniform Mediterranean, uh, with NECBC program, also thanks to the approval of a common project. So this process has to be continued to uh, and reinforced. And meeting us today are really uh, in support of this process and dialogue with uh, with key stakeholders. And finally, we we are really willing to see the the final results and the concrete solution of this project uh, in order to uh, transfer towards main key stakeholders, but also transfer in the frame of uh, future projects. Also, uh, looking at the south uh, countries. So. Thank you again and uh, enjoy the, the next session and the, the, the results, showing the results of the project. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Francesca, for highlighting the well, great perspective for the new uh, pro programming uh, period. Uh, so um, now I think that uh, from the well, first session, I don't see any questions so far? Uh, so now we can move to the next session. But before I would like to give the floor to Tommy, we have a few questions to, to ask you to start having uh, interaction uh, with you. So Tommy, you have the floor. Yes, thank you, Makali. And hi there again to everyone. Um, just a second, allow me to share my screen. And uh, indeed, we want to start get warmed up <laughs> for the most interactive part of our session. So we would like to see, first of all, who is with us today. So just a second from, okay. So please kindly go to Slido and uh, see the first question. So we have prepared a question that has to do with where are you based? Because we have noticed that we received a lot of registrations also from the South and Mediterranean countries and we're extremely happy and pleased about that. This demonstrates clearly how Plastic Busters is functioning, trying to bring together the Northern and the Southern part of the Mediterranean and exchange experiences and capitalize on the knowledge that has been generated. And actually also I'm extremely happy because almost all participants that registered are here with us today. I think that this is the first um, such event because mostly in the events we see that uh, only about half or even less of the participants are um, that registered attend, which demonstrates your commitment to the cause of combating marine litter. Don't be shy, please vote. 
so we can get a clearer picture. And in case you can't see your country, because I noticed that we have um, some participants from South Africa, from Germany, Poland, feel free to write the name of your country in the chat, because here we have uh, the option for other EU and other non-EU country. So obviously the project partner countries are um, ranking higher, but it's nice to see that we have also participants from Tunisia, from Egypt, Morocco. Sorry. I will give you a few seconds and then I will go to my next uh, question. Let's say until we reach half of the participants voting. We are at 38 now. Okay. And the next question has to do with the stakeholder group you represent. We have used here the quantuple helix approach. And uh, simply because we are talking about marine litter in MPAs, we have put uh, the managers at the, as a, a distinct group. So within the socioeconomic actors fall all the categories of associations, um, international, international organizations. And decision makers, for example, here are at different levels, local, national, or regional. It's nice to see that we have also some citizens with us. We did make an effort to disseminate uh, this event further beyond the, the usual groups of the project. And uh, we would be happy to take questions also from all of you. Okay. So I think now we have a, a better idea for who is with us today. So of course we have um, quite a few scientists because the component of the plastic buses addressing uh, the monitoring and assessment aspects is uh, quite uh, large, but also the decision makers as the project is uh, operating on the interface between science policy and to some extent society via the implementation of uh, measures. And um, in fact, we will now have the opportunity to hear more about the plastic buses and the monitoring and assessment component and what has been achieved so far in terms of generating fit for purpose data from, of course, uh, our scientific coordinator, Christina Fossi, who is also a very dear friend. So Christina, please go ahead. We don't hear you, so please also unmute yourself. I'm sorry, in fact. As you say, normally I talk too much, so I have started already with the mute microphone. <laughs> so, and uh, thank you very much, uh, Tommy, to the very nice presentation. And I would like to uh, say my great thanks to the speakers, uh, particularly to Alessandra and Francesca, that they have already introduced in a very clear way what is the main, uh, uh, I can say, souls and the empathy of the project. Uh, but uh, I have today the pleasure and honor to uh, try to describe mainly what is the main achievement and the main approach that we have used in the Plastic Buster project for the monitoring phase. 
as you know, the topic to define the presence and the impact of macro and uh, microplastic in the Mediterranean environment is attract a lot of the attention on the scientific point of view, but even on the governance point of view have uh, uh, observed previously uh, in the last decades. And uh, um, I would like to say that our adventure and that means when I say our, I talk about all the people that was involved in the Plastic Buster Consortium was start, uh, I think, more uh, approximately 10 years ago when uh, we defined for the first time the idea to join together the south and the north of Mediterranean Sea in the monitoring and in the measure against marine litter around the Mediterranean basin. And that was support festival from the uh, United Nations with the SDSN MED program from University of Siena. But uh, as mentioned before from Alessandra, one of the, our main achievement was the labeling of the project from Union for Mediterranean. And that did the represent for our consortium, I think a, a really important phase for the global endorsement of the idea at global level. But uh, the main topic of today will be discuss the strategy and the approach that we have used in this, uh, uh, I say, I use the words, fantastic project that is Plastic Buster NPA that was is support from Med Interreg, and we'll get, we go in deeply in description of the result. But I would like also to mention, and I think it's a very important point to stress in terms of capitalization, the extremely important interlink with other European initiative at the Mediterranean level, such as the uh, common project support from NCBC and to other main initiatives such as Indice2 and BlueMed. So uh, what is the main uh, idea on the Plastic Buster project? The Plastic Buster project is mainly to focus on to study the impact of marine litter in Mediterranean marine protected area. Because we know that the Mediterranean marine protected area is the heart of biodiversity and the conservation state in our um, Mediterranean Sea. But we know also that a lot of uh, uh, marine litter can impact this area. And it's for this reason that uh, three years ago was born under the umbrella of Interreg Med, uh, the Plastic Buster Initiative that uh, probably you know is uh, related with a consortium of 15 partners and 17 associate partners that generate this very important interlink between science and policy. Uh, as previously mentioned from Francesca, the project has uh, several novelty. The first one probably because this project is the first one at Mediterranean level that covered the whole management cycle of marine litter starting from the monitoring that will be the talk of the main to, uh, aim of my talk to measure that will be the aim of the talk of my friend Tommy, but even the connection with the governance that will be the final aim of this uh, first appointment in terms of capitalization. Just to go in deeply, the project is articulated in six different working package. Today, we'll talk today about the main result of the testing phase and the transferring one. Uh, what is uh, in terms of novelty that we approach of the uh, monitoring phase? In the monitoring phase, what we have done in the consortium is to uh, work for the first time using uh, marine litter forecasting model in order to identify hotspot area in the different marine protected area, and particularly to use an harmonizing approach to define the presence of macro and microplastic in different environmental compartment. And I am very proud to say that probably this project is the first one at the European level that have used and applied the joint list of marine strategy framework directive at present, uh, first of all, from uh, Georg on the beach litter monitoring. 
But uh, the real novelty of the project that we believe support very much the main pillars at the European level, particularly uh, the IMAP indicator and the Marie Strategy Framework Directive, are the contribution that the project can give in developing and harmonized diagnosis of the potential impact on biota. And in this case, we have working all together as scientists and project manager to try to focus on cover some main points. The first one will be to try to identify a wide range of marine lead turbine indicators in the different marine protected area, supporting also from field data in which we have uh, clear evidence of other species that can be more exposed to the impact of marine litter, even the, uh, the candidate indicator that is uh, Caretta Caretta. But even this approach was generated in an harmonized way in which we identify and we select by indicator a wide, in wide scale in relation to habitat and home range. This uh, very critical matrix was produced in agreement in the consortium in which you can see the different bioindicator species will be detected in terms of habitat, seafloor, coastal water, open water, seafloor, and coastal beaches, but even from home range, from local scale to basin scale. This very challenging approach was binding also with another uh, I, we think a challenging aspect that is try to support also the marine strategy and IMAP in one of the main questions that is try to identify the real impact of microplastic in terms of ingestion. And this is why in this project we develop for the apply for the first time the threefold monitoring approach both on environmental relevant species, but also on protected species in order to amplify the sign of the real impact of marine litter in biodiversity. So the first step will be to identify the presence in the gastrointestinal content of ingestion of micro and micro litter, but the more important information can be given the, mm, supporting the information of the transfer of plastic additive from plastic to the tissues and even to define the toxicological effect using, using a wide range of biomarker approach. All these techniques I would like to mention are applied and developed in plastic buster but are actually uh, transfer and capitalize in other two projects that is common and illicit at Mediterranean level. But one of, uh, I think, our main challenge was to link the diagnostic phase that is coming from the, from the monitoring action to the mitigation phase design specific mitigation action. And that is exactly what we are doing at the moment in testing phase and in the transferring phase and all the diagnostic data obtained in the several marine protected area that we we'll see in a minute will be then used to design specific mitigation action that will be the main, to, main subject of the second part of this section. But what we are now, what we have done in terms of monitoring, uh, very important, we have uh, analyzed and monitored the presence of uh, marine litter and impact in several marine protected areas that will be defined in terms of dimension as small scale NPAs, as Zach International Park, and later on our friend from this area will describe the main result. But even we explore the, uh, the monitoring activity also in another small marine protected area that is Cabrera National Park. Then we moving in a more uh, wide area, such as particularly the medium scale NPA as the Tuscan are Archipelago National Park, and one of the most important uh, ecological area that we have in the Mediterranean Sea, the Spami Pelago Sanctuary. One of the main message of this monitoring activity is the joint strategy that need to be applied with a strong synergy between 
marine protected area manager and researcher. And that is also the result of a recent training that we held uh, two weeks ago uh, under the umbrella of the Working Package 4. Uh, Coming to result is very difficult to summarize. I would like only to say that in the formerly protected area, we have a very pharaonic monitoring activity, both in terms of defined the presence of marine litter in the different compartment, but even the most complex aspect is to identify the impact on biodiversity. And on this context, I would like just present some very short data concerning the monitoring activity realized from eight institutions that work in the project for uh, involving 34 researchers in a monitoring activity of more 2,000 miles that we have realized two years ago in Pelago Sanctuary and in uh, Tosca National Park. The most important aspect that I would like to stress are the novelty of the approach that we use uh, in which for the first time we realized a simultaneous monitoring in the area of the floating litter, microplastic and biota observation and impact that produce a huge number of samples that at the moment are analyzed in order to define the presence of hotspot impact on biodiversity, impact on fisheries. Just to show some main point, the Pelago Sanctuary, for example, we define, as you can see in the map, a very dramatic difference in terms of concentration of microplastic between the level defined around the Toscan archipelago in respect to the more wide Pelago Sanctuary. And the same result is regarding also the large macroliter. But the most important achievement, and I think is one of the, the very interesting results that we obtain for the first time in high correlation between macro and microplastic concentration that is informed how is extremely important to define this aspect. But the most uh, attractive thing is also that we obtain the first validation of the forecasting model concentration and we show in a very clear way how the model that we have used to predict the hotspot area really correspond to the feed data. But the identification hotspot is also related to define the potential impact on species. And we have tried to answer to several questions. How can be the impact of endangered species? And in that way, we have used and several approach, both in terms of defined impact on charismatic species, such as cetacean, using the trifold monitoring approach, both in stranded, but also in free ranging animals, yeah. using this very spectacular sampling procedure that we have used in the Pelago Sanctuary, that is collect the skin biopsy, that is an all lethal system, that is allowed us to obtain skin biopsy in which you can define the health status of the species in relation to the potential ingestion or impact of uh, uh, macro and microplastic. Uh, again, here we are developing new techniques such as the detection of plastic additive, but also very emerging molecular biology technique to define the real toxicological interaction with chemicals, such as uh, the technique of omics and uh, metabolomics for the first time in marine mammals. We have a wide range of data concerning other species of interest, such as neostonic bioindicator. For the first time, we have defined the, in the presence of ingestion of microplastic in this new bioindicator that is the challenge rate Velella Velella, and we detect a very high occurrence, so very high ingestion in these species. And the most interesting aspect is we found a very high interaction and relation between the level of microplastic in the area and the impact of species. So identify hotspot and identify the effect on biodiversity. A lot of data are collected also for commercial species using an harmonizing approach developed with intercalibration exercise in the lab and we identify by indicator species that can identify the real impact in the different area. 
But one of the aspects that is very close to our heart and research and experiment, they are conducing all together in collaboration with the, this bioindicator species, that is the striped the red mullet, in which we apply for the first time the threefold monitoring approach in order to identify the real toxicological effect on commercial species. A lot of data, again, on will be published soon, we hope, uh, on uh, the deliverable in the impact of endangered species such as sea turtle, such as uh, seabirds, such as stranded cetacean. But I would like just to finalize, say that probably one of the most important aspects, again, that will be extremely important in terms to design mitigation action is to obtain a correct marine litter beach monitoring. And that, as mentioned before, we have the first application of the joint list that will be allowed to design specific mitigation action. Other activity are hotspot in beaches. And finally, the main goal will be to define the risk prediction in the area. Uh, at the moment, we are moving to the transferring phase that we have mentioned is a crucial part of the experiment. And we are doing these transferring phases in several marine protected areas. Uh, very recently, one week ago, we have lived all together with a friend of ISPRA, MIO, and University of Siena and her marine protected area, the monitoring and transferring phase with live streaming in the Capo Milazzo, and we hope to do in uh, the next week uh, also in Bonifacio. Uh, last words can be do on transferring on other area in the Mediterranean Sea, not European country, particularly uh, extremely important to support the idea to link together the interreg med supporting action with the NECBC. And that is what we are doing with the common project that will be presented later on from our colleague uh, from the Gambiente. And uh, even the extremely important interlink with the other uh, European initiative. That is the uh, final words that I would like to leave uh, to all the audiences that the science need to really support what happened in terms of uh, regulation and governance at the Mediterranean level. And uh, uh, we, we are extremely proud to say that probably the main outcome of this project can really contribute to uh, enforce the science policy dialogue and uh, at uh, what is exactly the goal of this uh, uh, first event of capitalization today. And we really hope that the next one will be in person in some nice place around the Mediterranean Sea. And thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very, very much, Christina, for all this uh massive amount of information that you shared with us today. It is always nice to see how much we have uh, progressed since the very beginning and how much we have achieved. And I would like just to add that apart from generating a lot of data, the, I think one of the novelties of the project is that we have generated fit for purpose data. So these data are ready, they're framed in the way that they should be framed in order to serve the policy making and decision making needs. And this is exactly what Christina was, um, you were highlighting towards the end, that one of the major roles of the plastic busters is to strengthen and bridge the gaps on the science policy and even society interface. Um, now I would like to give the floor to Haris Dimitriadis from the uh, National Park of Zakynthos, a marine protected area and uh, to invite him to share his experiences and insights when it comes to implementing the harmonized monitoring approach that was presented by Christina. So, Harry, the floor is yours. Um, hello, everybody. Thank you, Tommy. Um, yes, um, I would like to speak today and I will try to be very brief uh, because uh, we can talk about plastic busters for ages, but I have only 10 minutes. So I will try to focus um, to give you, a, let's say, a brief uh, idea of uh, how the National Marine Park of Zakynthos, as an MPA, uh, is involved in the Plastic Busters MPA's project as a partner and ACT serves 
uh, as a pilot site by implementing actions uh, regarding the monitoring, which will be the main piece of my presentation uh, today, but also how can transfer, directly transfer the gain knowledge from all this monitoring implementation of the harmonized protocols in um, the designing and implementation of effective uh, management of uh, protected area. So, oh, okay. Yes. Uh, can you see my screen? It's everything okay? Yes, yes. Okay. So, um, let's see where we stand. The Marine Park of Zakynthos is situated on uh, the Ionian Sea at uh, the southern part of it in uh, Western Greece. And uh, it's a um, protected area established since 1999 and um, has a prime ecological uh, value, uh, which means that it is considered as uh, one of the most important uh, reproduction areas for uh, the Mediterranean Sea Turtle Careta Careta at a regional level, which is, uh, you know, host like uh, one fourth of uh, along with uh, other beaches, but it's one of the most important nesting, nesting grounds in the Mediterranean for the population. But aside this, it also has some other prime ecological features uh, like monk seals, seabirds, cetaceans, Posidonia beds, which are species, priority species and habitats for. Uh, uh, EU Natura 2000 directive and um, alongside with uh, endangered and other endangered and protected species, critical habitats and so on. Um, so apart from the ecological value, it also hosts like a very critical, uh, it's a very important touristic area that um, hosts more than one uh, million of tourists every year. So uh, a great tourism uh, pressure is brought to the MBA each year, and this is what uh, the protected area has to manage. So um, we implemented um, the harmonized uh, monitoring protocols, and we were particularly involved as an MBA um, to several protocols. Uh, what I'm going to present here is uh, it comes through the collaboration of uh, the uh, Marine Park of Zakynthos with HCMR. Uh, we work collectively in the MPA uh, and we serve the role of um, the MPA managers and personnel and they serve um, the role of the scientific uh, experts. So this is the joint efforts, what I'm going to talk about is the joint efforts between HCMR and uh, the National Marine Park of Zykinfos. So we implemented the um, harmonized protocols about beach macro and microliter, um, the same thing about sea surface macro and microliter, sea flora liter, microplastics in selected commercial species and macro and microplastics in endangered species. So, and here you can see a map of um, which was the study area exactly and where uh, the surveys were deployed and so on. So regarding the first three protocols, uh, which are um, the most common ones, uh, it's regarding beach macroliter, uh, we were strongly involved as MPA in the implementation of these harmonized protocols. Um, and uh, we found some uh, results that are quite alarming because you can see that both inside and outside the MPA, uh, we are uh, well beyond uh, the bits uh, liter threshold values that the EU sets regarding the good ecological status. Uh, so yes, uh, I won't go very much into details, but uh, because I'm trying to give you a perspective from an MPA manager here um, that we got some very critical information about the source of the marine litter and also to which items we should focus on. So all this information is very critical for an MBA manager to know where he stands, what's the, the current situation, what are the sources and um, what are the priorities that uh, the MBA has to focus on regarding uh, the mitigation uh, measures that 
should be implemented um, in the MPA. Similarly, here we have uh, the scissor phase macroliter results, um, which gave us uh, also um, the information that we have a lot of plastics, uh, whether we like it or not, but this is the real situation. And the same goes again for SC flora um, macro and microliter. So all this information is very critical for uh, an MPA because we can capitalize all this information and directly transfer it um, to our management plans and actions in order to achieve, uh, let's say, our conservation efforts. So regarding the first uh, three categories of protocols, um, our involvement was quite, uh, let's say, intense. So along with the SCMR colleagues, of course. So uh, some main questions arise when you implement such protocols, even for the first time, uh, let's say, for more of them in our area. Um, so regarding its protocol, this is what we concluded in our area. Um, so for example, um, how much the MPA staff can be involved in the implementation of the protocol. And here you can see what we have uh, concluded regarding its uh, protocol separately, which varies from high involvement to moderate involvement. Um, yes, we are involved, but do we have the skills to do so? Um, well, for the most of the most cases, um, the skills needed are quite low. So yes, uh, we can go for it quite easily. Um, complexity in data analysis for MPA staff because, okay, we go to the field, we collect the data, everything is super nice, but do we have uh, the capacity and knowledge to analyze the data that we get? So you can see that the complexity varies from low to moderate and with, part, uh, let's say, with some proper training, um, we can do it, yes, definitely. It's not uh, a restrictive, uh, let's say, factor uh, that we cannot overcome. Um, but to do all these things, you also need equipment. So um, what are the requirements uh, for equipment? Uh, in some cases, it's low. In some other cases, it's high. But through this project, we got the proper funding or we got the proper collaborations with research institutes and so on. And we were trained on how to use this equipment or even to buy our own equipment uh, through the project funding. Um, some, uh, let's say, analysis then require a laboratory or so. Um, so can we do all by ourselves? Do we need external experts to advise us or to do some analysis for us? Uh, the um, reply to this question varies depending on the protocol. But um, if you set up uh, a very strong uh, collaboration network and uh, memorandums of understandings or uh, collaborations and so on, uh, you can have your scientists' friends to assist you in the effort of gathering long-term monitoring data. Uh, transferring to management is from high to moderate, so we can say that uh, we can advise uh, our management plans and replica replicability of for long-term data because th this project is going to end uh, uh, in a few months, but uh, I can assure that um, at least we are going to involve uh, many of these protocols in our recurrent monitoring uh, scene that we have in the MPA on the long run. But what happens when complexity and novelty increases? So we're talking about the harmonized protocols regarding microplastic in selected and commercial harvested species. Um, so we collected um, along with the CMR uh, uh, scientists, uh, alive and dead uh, species from alive and dead uh, uh, specimens uh, for several, for several, from several species. And also, we did some macro and microplastic uh, analysis in endangered species, as Christina told you earlier. So we also included seabirds, monk seals, and sea turtles. And this was the first time that uh, such a thing is happening in the MPA, because we didn't have any uh, previous research efforts or management efforts regarding micro and, macro and microplastics 
both in commercial harvest species and endangered species as well. So that was a very big novelty for us. Uh, so they used like, um, okay, sorry, uh, microplastic analysis, biomarker analysis, plastic tracers analysis. I won't go too much details to that. Um, and also in endangered species, which give us for the first time some very valuable information what's going on with the species that uh, we have in the area because uh, managing of the species of the species for us it's like another day in the office but we didn't have a clue of what's going on for for the effects of the plastic pollution in those species that are our main conservation target okay so another old point of view of an mpa manager what we have learned through this process, uh, significant knowledge has been gained in all aspects, both regarding, uh, let's say, the more classic approach of project implement of uh, protocol implementation, like bits microliter, bits microliters, surface, and so on, uh, and also we gain some very valuable uh, knowledge uh, regarding the sampling on endangered species and. Uh, other harvested or commercial species that are, of course, of uh, management concern. Our carrying capacity was greatly increased, and I'm talking about we learn how to do things. Um, we know what manpower we need for uh, to implement all these protocols. We learn. We got some expertise on how to use the equipment. What equipment do we need, and so on. Um, we tested on how we can transfer all this knowledge gained uh, to direct, directly to management. And this is happening now through this project on uh, the mitigation uh, pilot actions that are uh, running at the moment in the MPA. So this is an ongoing process. And uh, we check out a bit uh, what's the replicability uh, of these methods in the future. So how we can capitalize in the future all the knowledge gained um, for uh, acquiring long-term uh, monitoring data or to battle uh, marine plastics uh, in the MPA. For instance, on the beach macroliter, I show you that we are well beyond the threshold values that uh, we should achieve. But now we're starting to build up a data set, a long time, uh, time series, in order to monitor um, how our mitigation measures are performing. So are we good in reducing um, uh, plastics in the MPA? And the take home message is that um, joint efforts of managers and scientists are very crucial and critical um, towards this end. Because sometimes MPAs are not academia or uh, research institutes or universities, uh, and they can have a building capacity, but up to an upper limit that they cannot exceed. So they need uh, collaborations with uh, scientists and uh, research uh, institutes in order to get all the help that they can uh, have uh, regarding analysis, uh, consultation, uh, and so on. Uh, thank you for listening. Thank you, Harris, very, very much. I have to say I was very impressed by the clarity and the comprehensiveness of your intervention. Uh, really, it's very nice to see to which extent all these uh, harmonized uh, protocols can be applied at local level in-house within the uh, MPA, because this is a discussion that we have been having for quite some time also within the Act for Litter project and also within the Plastic Busters. So I think that the insights that you shared can be very beneficial when it comes to the transferring phase and to when it comes to understanding the which knowledge outputs are more suitable in being transferred to other MPAs and what kind of level um, of assistance and collaborations are needed in order to operationalize these protocols. And uh, it's also really nice to see to the, uh, to the large extent that the MPA has benefited from the project in terms of having now a clearer picture of uh, where the problem lies and how this can be tackled. And in fact, this will be uh, the content of my uh, intervention. 
So my intervention will address, um, just a second to share my screen, will address the issue of uh, mitigation measures, prevention and mitigation measures. And um, just a second, where are we? Okay. Uh, which, uh, as it has been also uh, highlighted by Christina, the, it's one of the novelties of the project that it addressed the entire management cycle of marine litter. So we're not just talking about monitoring and assessment, but we are going beyond the understanding of the problem into operationalizing solutions on the ground. And uh, in this, uh, within this context, basically we have on board nine pilot MPAs we have been uh, implementing five different types of measures and um, also two more demos are in the pipeline, while also we have uh, engaged ourselves in the transferring phase and we have now on board uh, four more MPAs willing to take the experience of the pilot MPAs and replicate it in their uh, MPAs too. So, here you can see actually the MPAs who have been uh, implementing the different uh, demos. These are located in France, in Greece, in Italy, in Slovenia, in Spain. And now we have also on board uh, a Croatian MPA, uh, the Bijuni National Park, the Karaborun Sazan MPA in Albania, and Capo Milazzo in Italy where we had the chance last week to do the live streaming. And I hope that uh, some of you had the opportunity to experience the, the kind of work that we are implementing on the ground. And um, I would like here to stress that um, we are constantly bombarded by a lot of information about plastic, plastic pollution, uh, that we have to uh, phase out plastics, combat plastics. And oftentimes we hear um, discussions referring to our era to the Plastocene. So basically from the Anthropocene, we have moved to the Plastocene. But I think that one important message from the Plastic Busters MPAs is basically that uh, we are not, by, by no means are we promoting the um, phasing out of plastics, but we are discussing here and we are promoting here the wise use of plastics. There is a reason why plastics have gained so much um, importance in our modern societies. It's a, a brilliant material, but uh, we need to learn how to use it wisely and we need to learn how to move away from linear, let's say, consumption levels to circular economy levels, but primarily we need also to respect the waste hierarchy. So once we manage to avoid the generation of uh, plastic waste, then we need to ensure that whatever plastics are put in the cycle, uh, in the production and consumption cycle are being uh, managed within a circular uh, economy context. And this is an important message that we would like to share. And um, in fact, also one other important uh, message that stems from our project, and uh, we're not just the uh, plastic busters, um, but also we are uh, trying to bust the myths and misconceptions about the marine litter issue. So for example, when it comes to the sources, one um, very important misconception is the fact that yes, indeed in the Mediterranean land-based sources tend to play a higher role than sea-based sources of litter, but sea-based sources are of paramount importance in many areas of the Mediterranean and in particular in marine protected areas. And here you can see some images that I have taken in different sampling campaigns in uh, uh, the coastline of protected areas where basically you see fishing gear and muscle nets. And in fact, I was extremely happy to see um, also within the updating process of the regional action plan for marine litter that the uh, fishing gear has uh, gained importance in terms of being properly addressed. So this is uh, one major misconception frequently uh, promoted and it's quite surprising because oftentimes in meetings we see uh, the different scientists presenting data that demonstrate that the fisheries and aquaculture sector for example play an important role or the most important role when it comes to the marine litter problem but then when it comes to the closing remarks 
uh, oftentimes the emphasis again has been drawn to the land-based sources. Uh, so this is something uh, to take into consideration. And another uh, important misconception that um, we have uh, since the very beginning of our project, uh, streamlining within our uh, prevention and mitigation actions has to do with the misconceptions when it comes to the different solutions. So from the very beginning, within the scope of our project, we have sort of excluded cleanup operations simply because we believe that uh, end of pipe solutions are not um, the way forward. Yes, they can, in, in case of uh, hotspots, they can improve the environmental status of um, the coastline, for example, or even in some cases of the seafloor. But um, from our experience, also from other projects, the removal actions, for example, in the water column are extremely difficult, they're extremely resource intensive. So we need to focus upstream and we need to focus on uh, prevention actions. And uh, this has been the emphasis placed within the scope of our project. And uh, in fact, one other important aspect that we have been trying to stress throughout all our uh, events and all our communication materials has to do with um, the, a lot of uh, misunderstandings generated by the terms bio-based plastics and biodegradable plastics, which oftentimes are being introduced as a solution. So first of all, just to highlight that bio-based plastics have, are, are identical with the conventional plastics with their fossil equivalents, let's put it like that. So basically they have nothing to do with the issue of marine litter in the sense that they pollute the same way the coastline. They are the same polymer at the end of the day. And when it comes now to the biodegradable and compostable plastics, and actually yesterday I had the opportunity to attend the event of the SAPEA and the related intergroup of the European Parliament on presenting the results and findings of a study that had been commissioned to the SAPEA group um, when it comes to the biodegradability of plastics in open environments, again, the majority of the findings of this report demonstrate that biodegradable and compostable plastics, on the one hand, they just pollute the coasts and seas as conventional plastics, and also uh, they behave quite differently in the open environments than in managed settings, for example, in a landfill or a composter. And actually the key message of this uh, report has to do with the fact that yes, compostable or biodegradable plastics could be a small part of the solution within a circular economy context. So we're not talking about biodegradable plastics being left in the open environments. However, they have a very limited, let's say scope of application and they require a comprehensive system for their end of life um, management. So, for example, it makes no sense introducing biodegradable plastics in the market when we don't have um, within the national waste management system uh, biodegradable uh, management schemes in place. Or on the other side, it doesn't make a change in shifting from conventional plastics to biodegradable plastics and compostable plastics. The idea here is to reduce the use of uh, in particular single use plastics. All of these uh, misconceptions have been taken into account within their scope of our project. And um, I would like to stress once again that the overall idea of the pilot actions has been to move from a comprehensive diagnosis of the marine litter problem to uh, tailor-made actions on the ground. And here you can see the process on how these actions have been identified, selected, and uh, eventually operationalized. And key to that process has been fit for purpose data, uh, participatory and bottom-up approaches, um, uh, thinking of feasible and effective solutions, coordinated actions, and methodologically sound processes. And all of these are in fact captured in guidelines that we have elaborated for the implementation of the different demos. And very, very soon we will have uh, the opportunity to launch them uh, in, in a document format, but also we plan to convert all the plastic, exper plastic buses experience when it comes to operationalizing measures, but also performing marine litter monitoring in e-learning modules. 
Uh, so back to the measures that we have implemented, these have focused in replacement of single-use plastics, also because our actions are being strongly driven by the developments at policy level and the single-use plastics directive. And single-use plastics are, are one of the most frequently find, found items in MPAs. Derelict fishing gear management schemes, banning specific activities like uh, smoking uh, activities on the coastline, where, because cigarette parts are one of the most frequently find, found items in some areas, extended producer responsibility schemes, and of course, awareness raising and education for sustainable development campaigns, which are crucial to achieving the uh, crucial to minimizing litter on the coastline. And here I would like to stress that uh, our project is a concrete showcase of how um, all the results delivered by the Act for Litter uh, project have been capitalized upon and have been utilized to the extent maximum within the Plastic Busters MPAs project. And um, I will come back to that in one minute. And here are the list of measures that are being, the specific measures that are being implemented throughout the Mediterranean, Northern Mediterranean countries at this very moment in time. But I would like to draw attention to the single use plastics free hotels, restaurants, and cafes. This is a very uh, important activity that has gained a lot of momentum and more and more uh, MPAs are willing to implement this kind of measure simply because it addresses one of the biggest problems that they face. And also um, another important um, initiative has to do with setting up a reusable cup delivery system for beach bars in the, the um, in the delta of Ebro River in Spain and an action that has been coordinated by ACP Iraq. So I'm just um, uh, highlighting these two major uh, activities, but this doesn't mean that the other mentions that are being piloted are uh, of uh, lesser importance. And uh, Okay, somehow I cannot move to my next slide. Okay, so uh, basically I would like here to um, conclude my intervention with uh, bringing um, um, in your attention uh, two major uh, demos that have been completed within the framework of Plastic Busters and uh, within uh, MIO's um, frame of actions. And these have to do with uh, one uh, or actually two demos that have been implemented in the landscape uh, park of Strunjan in Slovenia. And it had um, actually operationalized measures that have been agreed within the scope of Act for Liter and within the action plan of the area. And uh, something similar when it comes to the context has happened in Trabaikos Calf Protected Areas, again, an Act for Liter partner, where uh, it, um, a demo on derelict fishing gear has been implemented. So now I would like to pass the floor to uh, IC, who has been our local partner in Fermai Coast Gulf, to share with you uh, insights of um, this demo and how it operationalized on the ground. And later on, we will have the opportunity to hear more from our local partner uh, in Surunyan Landscape Park. And this is a photograph from our last week's live streaming. It was a great pleasure to, at least after a long time, to see some members of the group. And uh, now I would like to quickly move to Anastasia. Anastasia, are you with us? Yes, here I, I am. See. Okay, yes. and uh, please take the floor and... Give me a minute to share my screen. Of course. Perfect. Okay, uh, you can see my screen, yes? Yes. Okay, uh, thank you, thank you very much. And thank you everyone for all the valuable information that uh, we hear here today and for all your actions in the context of Plastic Busters. Uh, I'm Anastasia and I represent IC. IC is an NGO based in Thessaloniki, Greece, where also the Thermaikos Gulf protected areas are located. And the area uh, that the pilot, the pilot action implemented in the context of uh, plastic busters took place uh, in collaboration with the management authority of Thermaikos Gulf, Blue Cycle, and with the support and under the guidance of uh, MIO. 
Um, Thermaikos Gulf is located in at the north of Greece. It's um, an, a complex of an extended complex of uh, wetlands. It's an established national park um, under the name of uh, National Park of uh, Axios Ludias Aleakmonas since 2009. It includes estuaries, marshes, um, salt flats, and lagoons, particularly rivers flow into Thermaikos Gulf, two of them forming extensive deltas. Uh, there is also a lagoon and two other wetlands. So the ecological value of the area has been recognized since it is protected under the Natura 2000 network. And it is also included in the, um, and protected by the Ramsar in the National Convention on Wetlands. Uh, the area is that extensive that it expands into four different uh, regional units. And uh, its ecological value is also highlighted by the, um, its rich biodiversity, which uh, you can see some of the numbers of species uh, hosted in the area, including protected plants like the sea daffodil, uh, endangered um, animal species, like the European ground squirrel and otter. And um, since it is located on the main uh, migratory bird route, uh, it also hosts, uh, it's a place where birds stop winter um, or host it during the whole year, included some uh, rare birds like the avocates and the Dalmatian pelican. Uh, the local communities are uh, really um, developed and uh, based on the ecosystem services of the area. Since uh, the Thermaikos Gulf protected areas are located near Thessaloniki, which is the second largest city in Greece, and um, a part of the national park also includes uh, one of the most important uh, plains in Greece. Uh, so unfortunately, unfortunately, there are some um, pressures that are posed to the, um, the natural environment. Some of them are the water pollution, mainly coming from the intensive agricultural and gas activities. Uh, water pollution is also a cross-border issue for the area since the four rivers that flow in the Thermaikos Gulf also come across from other, other countries of the Balkan Peninsula. Uh, there are also many uh, incidents of illegal dumping, dumping of solid waste, uh, as well as uh, of illegal fishing, mainly during periods that fishing in internal waters, waters is prohibited. Uh, there is the issue of uh, overgrazing, and uh, since there are activities of uh, stock breeding, uh, illegal hunting, sand extraction, and logging. Um, so our pilot action, uh, of course, concerned the mitigation of pre and prevention of marine litter in the area. Uh, according to the data that have, had been collecting, collected during the previous year from, from IC, all of the coasts and the beaches that are included in the national park are considered as very dirty based on the clean coast index. And the most common and abundant um, items that are found in these beaches are muscle nets, plastic pieces, and uh, plastic strings, which are also used from the muscle farmers in order for them to tie their nets. Um, the blue sign that you can see on the map, it's the areas that we selected to implement our pilot action, the first steps of our pilot actions and our pilot action, and um, they are located near the biggest uh, muscle farming fields, and uh, the beaches are near the por ports, the fishing ports that are mainly used from the, the local fishers and the muscle farmers. Uh, so our, our action was a priority measure uh, introduced during the action plan for marine litter in Thermaikos Gulf protected areas in the context of Act for Litter project. And it was um, organized under the guidance of, of uh, MIO and adopted by the management authority of the area. And um, it was relevant with the derelict fishing gear management schemes in the area. 
Uh, particularly, it was the priority action that, according to the Act for Later, included field visits, interviews, uh, workshops, and data collection on marine litter in the area, concrete prevention and mitigation actions, and the evaluation of the actions, with the aim to raise awareness uh, among mussel farmers, fishers, and other stakeholders on the marine litter issue, and the aim to promote co-responsibility. Uh, our first step included the assessment of the marine litter coming from uh, fishing and aquaculture activities uh, through field visits and interviews with the relevant stakeholders. And the results that came out were that um, the items that are mainly disposed in the context of their activities are strings and cords and muscle nets which are disposed uh, by thousands annually. And uh, according to the monitoring we implemented based on the harmonized monitoring approach, uh, the results showed that uh, more than 65% of the litter items observed in these three selected areas uh, were relevant to fisheries activities. And particularly 60% of them were connected with uh, muscle farming. Uh, I can tell you that in a hundred meters of our uh, sampling play, sampling area, uh, we observed 200 uh, plastic strings, the ones that are used from the muscle farmers, and a uh, hundred pieces of uh, muscle nets in these three selected areas. So apart from monitoring and assessing the presence of uh, fishing gear, our aim was to promote best practices among fisheries and aquaculture sector and uh, establish uh, separate collection uh, um, places for uh, the muscle nets and these plastic strings that are used and um, promote the active involvement and engagement of these relevant stakeholders. The stakeholder groups that were addressed were the muscle farmers and the fishers and the representatives of their associations. Since they form local associations, there is an association in each of these areas included in our pilot action. Uh, all the competent authorities included port authorities, local authorities, and uh, in during the implementation of our action, also the district of set drama Macedonia uh, joined our efforts, uh, other NGOs, the local citizens of the areas, and of course the media in order to spread the message about the issue that is uh, faced in the area and distribute the results of our efforts in order to support it. Uh, from uh, the Halastra port, one of the three selected areas, a total amount of uh, seven and a half tons of abandoned muscle nets were collected and uh, more than 14 uh, extra tons of abandoned muscle nets were collected from the estuary of Ludias River. But in order to efficiently address the issue, uh, we had to take into consideration all the facilities that were available from uh, every different uh, municipality that participated and every different area. So since um, the municipality of Delta, where the Halastra Fishing Port and the Ludia Estuary are locating, there were no available facilities, neither for the transportation of the collected materials, nor for their storage. Uh, we decided to establish collection stations where the muscle farmers and the fishers were informed, informed to separately collect their muscle nets and uh, the, the strings that are disposed. Uh, for the third area we selected, which is located in a different municipality, is in the um, wetland of Falikes Kitrus. Uh, there was a green point uh, from uh, in the municipality where all the recyclable materials are uh, stored. Uh, and what muscle farmers did until that point was that they just disposed their muscle nets in the in the bins that we all know for the waste, and they were just driven uh, in the landfill. 
So we decided to provide them with uh, extra beans uh, and uh, of course inform the, uh, all the stakeholders to separately dispose the, their nets in these particular beans in order to store them in the green point of the area. And uh, what follows in all these cases is that uh, all the materials are transported to Blue Cycle, which uh, through the process of mechanical recycling, uh, shreds all the nets. There are some, some steps of, of mechanical recycling that are followed. And uh, the materials are used as uh, raw materials and provided to the plastic industry. Of course, they are not uh, transformed into Jenga pieces, but there, were, uh, there was just a, a step of the testing procedure uh, in order to find out which was the most proper use of um, these materials. So more than 20, uh, 20 tons of uh, muscle nets have already been recycled. Uh, of course, we faced some challenges um, during uh, the implementation of the, the pilot action. Uh, first of all, due to the measures enforced uh, because of the pandemic, we had to postpone and cancel the workshop and the meetings that were organized in order to organize round tables with the stakeholder with the stakeholders and discuss the issue with them and of course inform them about our intentions and plans. Uh, these uh, workshops were replaced with uh, interpersonal contacts which came up to be really efficient since um, interpersonal contacts in this case uh, in the field where they are really working are really valuable for us. They provide us with information uh, we would probably didn't have access in the case of workshops. And um, developing personal contacts with them was a key factor in order for them to support our actions and ensure the maintenance, the maintenance of all the steps that uh, we wish to keep following. Um, and another challenge that came out that was that the transportation of the materials um, was a problem to address since we had to find a cost-effective way in all these three cases uh, in order to ensure that uh, the, the collected muscle nets and the plastic material will continue going to Blue Cycle for uh, recycling. Um, and some of the and the main home take message for us was that uh, in order to address such issues that are totally linked and relevant with uh, stakeholders, their engagement from the beginning and in uh, every step of the action um, is, uh, is the main factor. Uh, in this case, the stakeholder were mainly the master farmers and the, the fishers. But uh, all the solutions uh, came out through the collaboration with their associations and the municipalities and the district go government of the area, because this is also the way that we found solutions to the problem, uh, even concerning from the transportation issues to the issues of collaboration and all the muscle farmers taking part and uh, participating in the procedure and collecting their muscle nets separately. Uh, the, the, um, the key was to collaborate with uh, all of them and the solution came from this collaboration. And thank you very much. Thank you, Anastasia. Thank you very much for sharing all this important um, information from the ground, literally. <laughs> Uh, because it's very important for all of us that uh, most of the time is most of our time is spent in our offices so it's not like we have uh, first-hand experiences on the ground in order to understand what kind of implications may emerge in terms of operationalizing a solution and uh, now I would like to invite um, my colleague Brina, Brina Knetz from uh, Landscape Park, uh, Park Strunyan to take the floor and uh, share with us uh, her story Definitely. from the front line uh, when it comes to addressing the regulatory issues. So, Brina? Yes, thank you very much. So, here is my presentation. I hope 
that you all see it. Do you see it? Yes? Okay. Thank you very much. So, uh, hello to everyone. My name is uh, Brina Knez. Uh, I'm working at the Public Institute Landscape Park Strunyan from 2009. And in the last year, I was working on demos of prevention and mitigation measures at our park. So, let me first present our park. Um, here we can see the Gulf of Adriatic. And at the northernmost part, there is Gulf of Trieste, and our park lies in the very heart of the Gulf of Trieste. We say that um, this is a place of superlatives. Why? Because we have the, on, in, on such a small surface, we can find the highest fleece cliffs that we can see here in these photos, um, the longest part of natural coast in the Bay of Trieste. The only Slovenian marine lagoon in Slovenia, uh, the northernmost Mediterranean salt pans where salt is produced in a traditional way on Petola, and the very well preserved cultural landscape. So the park uh, throughout the whole year has problems with marine litter. Uh, the report named update of the initial assessment of the status of marine waters under the jurisdiction of the Republic of Slovenia, written uh, by the Ministry of Environment and Special Planning due to Marine Strategy Framework, Framework Directive, covers data about marine litter on Slovenian coast from 2030 to 2017, partly from the Fish Gear Project and from the unofficial national monitoring of waste on coastal areas. Waters. Here we can see that we have a real huge problems with cigarette butts and filters. Um, between the year of 2030 and 2017, Marilita was sampled here in Fiesta, Union, and on two parts of Bele Scalet locations here. So the total length analyzed uh, was of 17,450 uh, meters a total of uh, 52,861 pieces of waste was, were collected. Waste density was of 302 pieces on 100 meters of Slovenian coast. Accord, uh, according to the category, the most common waste of macroliter on the Slovenian coast is made of artificial polymer materials more than 80% glass and ceramics more than 12% and metals around 3%. The main problems, uh, as I already said, represent cigarette butts, then ceramics and polystyrene pieces, then plastic butts and so on. So the demos that were implemented with the financial support of Interact uh, Med Plastic Busters, MPAs, in collaboration with, with MIO, uh, and with the involvement of Chamber of Commerce and Industry of Slovenia and Zavod Trinity, um, we were already, I must say, I must say involved in Interact Med Act for Leader project under the guidance of MIO. And we developed their Marine Litter Action Plan. Our institute had um, now to the Plastic Busters project the unique chance to operationalize some of the priority measures shortlisted in our action plan. Uh, in our plan, we wrote down four activities that we have now the chance to upgrade and they, that were straw-free initiatives. So to support the straw-free initiative, promote the reduction of stops and promote the national campaign living, you can see. Adopt the beach, so to stop the adopt the beach thing uh, for this part of our coast. Clean coast to implement cleanup campaigns and removal actions. And the main objective were to collect some scientific evidence on the types and sources of marine litter, prevent marine litter entering the coastal and marine environment, and remove and recover marine litter from the coastal and marine environment. The main problems were to reduce significantly or phase out single-use plastics in these beach bars, and uh, for the coastal food and beverage outlets to voluntarily register to a network and commit themselves to comply with a set of good environmental practices, such as soup-free, 
snack bars. The soup-free snack bars is a measure that has been identified as a priority action within our action plan. Also, adopted beach was one measure identified as a priority uh, action within the marine litter action plan. Um, through the adopted beach theme, we would like um, we encourage volunteers to adopt beaches, clean them up, and survive them throughout the year, and uh, so to collect valuable marine litter um, evidence. So, oh, no, I went to. Bar, yes. So, um, the main ideas of the demos was to raise public awareness, uh, to promote prevention activities, to establish a functional web platform with all the useful information to help demos, to address the participatory science approach, and to raise public awareness with the um, uh, with the figure uh, bus sculptures and the magic bin. We all can see. Uh, our work here on this photo. So um, we are really pleased that more than 400 stakeholders engaged in concrete actions to combat marine plastic pollution. But uh, we must say that it would be better um, if COVID-19 wouldn't happen. So more than 350 students and ed educators have been directly involved in awareness raising activities and the participatory science activities also on the terrain. Eight fit for purpose marine litter data sets were generated via beach litter survey campaign. And one of the main highlights was the installation of bins, magic smokers for the cigarette butts, and also the sculpture that really caught the attention of the visitors of the park. I must say that um, to whoever I talked to, it was aware of this culture. Everybody knows that we put it there. And so it was also an eye-cutting um, experience culture. Also, the Slovenian actress Anna Maria Mitic adopted a part of the speech and make some promotion of the action. So um, what to say about the supper caterers? More than 30 business representatives participated in a workshop to cater how to reduce the usage of single-use plastic in the catering business in June last year. All their questions about reducing plastic were from um, the Chamber of Commerce directly um, um, sent to the ministry because of the um, uh, because of soup. Um, Directive. Uh, so far, six catering businesses have been implementing the guidelines on reducing the use of single use plastics, and one of them was already awarded with Super Caterers certificate. Some of them are now experienced also some troubles because of COVID. Uh, so they don't know if they uh, should shut down the business or they will try to go through this. Uh, trouble period. Uh, what we learned about super caterers that the timing was you know, not um, good because of uh, the situation with COVID. Uh, also, um, the challenge is to find cheap and suitable alternative to single use plastic packaging. And also, um, it would be nice to find a way of reusable material packaging, but also here are some trou troubles regarding CASA when food is involved. What about Adopt the Beach? The challenges of the Adopt the Beach demo was very specific of the terrain because of the cliffs. So uh, to find safe part of the coast in our park was um, a little bit uh, hard. And also another challenge was, was the tidal regime. Also, there was a misunderstanding of the process uh, for the coordinators because they didn't have enough motivation to collect data according to the protocol. So the next steps surely are for super caterers to establish a platform where, where caterers could connect and exchange good practices. The Adopt Beach team gave us, gave us like a management of a manager of the park, some good pillars for further actions, but the adopters should really understand why monitoring according to protocols uh, is needed. 
So this is everything from my, from my part and thank you for the attention. Thank you very, very much, Plena, for again, a very interesting presentation. And uh, I hope that uh, because indeed the data for landscape parks are quite alarming, the high level of um, amount of litter items found on the coastline that exceeds, you know, so much of the threshold value of, that has been defined at pan-European level. So I hope that these actions will uh, bring uh, the coastline and uh, in general the marine environment closer to good environmental status. And um, if I may say also we have, uh, because the, the soups related activity has uh, triggered a lot of attention uh, within the Plastic Buses project, but also beyond, and uh, it's been piloted also by MIO in other areas like in Crete, that indeed it's a massive challenge on the one hand to, um, to promote the understanding that the key objective is to eliminate the use of single-use plastics, because immediately when people th talk about um, single-use plastics and beach bars are thinking of alternatives. But the, the first, the primary aim is to minimize and even phase out and eliminate the use of single-use plastics, and then to see what other potential solutions could be found. For example, in some cases, uh, there can be nice solutions. For example, if, if it's obligatory to have a steer for your drink, you could use, I don't know, a cinnamon stick or something else that um, is not, does not have a big impact on the environment. But all of this will be reflected uh, within the guidelines that we are preparing and we hope that will provide um, a constructive um, methodological approach on how to set up such kind of schemes, uh, not only in MPAs, but beyond in other local uh, contexts. Um, I know that we are a little bit behind schedule, so um, please bear with us a few minutes because uh, we are now entering a very important uh, session of um, our uh, capitalization event. But before doing that, I would like to kindly ask you to um, wait a second to uh, respond to a question that I have prepared for you. And um, this has to do with uh, which part, which type of activities. Um, let me see, slides off from current slide. Here is the question. Which lines of action do you think that it's more relevant for your scope of work? Is it the monitoring and assessment? Is it the prevention and mitigation? Just in order to understand what kind of activities are more interesting for you within having in mind to, to build synergies with your own activities and initiatives. I hope all of you have the slider link and code. Maybe uh, a colleague of mine can share it again on the chat for those that joined later. Okay, and while our colleagues are voting, uh, I would kindly ask all of you to open your cameras, okay, because we would like to take uh, a group photo. So, I think that we got a clear indication, actually the majority of you are interested in both, but also I see a lot of interest in prevention and mitigation, which we are actually at least from an NGO perspective, very happy to see that through the last 10 years, uh, the monitoring and assessment has made quite a lot of advances through the different uh, projects funded on the ground in the Mediterranean. And now we have sufficient information in order to design and implement uh, tailored made measures. So let me stop sharing my screen and Let's try to open all, everybody, our cameras and take um, a snapshot. 
And then we can move on with the next very interesting and last session. And smile also. <laughs> Ignazi, are you ready? Okay, I think that now it's time to pass the floor to the next speaker. Uh, and this is Anis Ismail. Uh, he is the environment expert in the uh, West project. And um, uh, the West project is one of the associated partners and a member of the advisory board, sorry, of the Plastic Buses MPAs. And today we are going to hear from Anis how Wes has been uh, closely collaborating with Plastic Buses MPAs and how we have been building synergies uh, even, I dare say, since the inception phase of the Plastic Busters MPAs project. So, Anis, the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you, Tommy. Thank you, everyone. Thanks uh, to all of you for giving me this opportunity to be, uh, to be with you, to be with you, my friends, uh, um, Christina, uh, Alessandra, Silvia, Tommy, friends and partners from the from the region. I see also other faces. So I'm going to present the West activities on marine litter and uh, the synergies with plastic busters and PAs. I'm uh, the key environment expert for the West project. So this is a regional project. Uh, West uh, um, strives to address the country needs for creating the enabling environment and enhancing the capacity of stakeholders in the partner countries to tackle problems related to pollution prevention and water use efficiency. So we have two components, one on pollution prevention and one on water use efficiency. Uh, and I, myself, um, based in Tunisia, I'm coordinating the uh, environmental uh, component. We, we are tackling uh, many um, issues, including um, circular economy issues, uh, pollution prevention, uh, industrial pollution, and I'm going to share with you some results uh, about uh, uh, plastics and marine litters. So we have nine partner countries. Uh, the project is around, has a budget around 9.5 million euros and started in 2019 and will end in 2023. And here you can see that we have two. Uh, this is the consortium down. And you, you can notice that we have MIO and SCP Iraq who are partners of the consortium. And of course, this is a good, this is for, for the first, I would, lay, I would say, the good bridge between the uh, uh, West project and the Plastic, Buster, uh, uh, Plastic Busters uh, project. So this is the policy framework for West marine litter and plastics uh, related actions. Of course, we are, our, all our activities are in line with the uh, European uh, UFM, UNEP map uh, directives, uh, strategies, action plans. Um, and of course, we are also uh, supporting the partner countries to uh, uh, to respond to the uh, to their agenda, uh, regional and national agenda. Uh, especially on marine litter and plastics. Uh, maybe I can recall uh, first that uh, this uh, uh, West project is building on previous successful uh, uh, EU funded projects, uh, and particularly on Ori the, the Horizon 2020 capacity building Mediterranean environmental uh, program project, uh, the SWIM uh, support mechanism, and later uh, on the SWIM Horizon 2020 uh, support mechanism. And here I can also um, report and recall some uh, bilateral uh, national activities where uh, under SWIM or as it I was in charge of the environmental component so I can uh, make it uh, uh, present uh, some results uh, and yeah, uh, for Morocco, Algeria and Egypt we have trained and provided technical assistance for the characterization of marine and coastal litter on beaches and we have also um, um, all the results have been used to develop the national marine litter management plans and uh, to align with the uh, regional plan on marine litter management. We have also we have had a number of uh, regional activities and most of the activities are centered on regional coherence and synergy and cooperation with all Mediterranean uh, initiatives and projects, including, of course, plastic busters. We have, yes, a series of activities, regional activities, peer to peer and webinars. Talking about synergy with uh, Maybe before synergy, I can also I would like to also to report on a successful uh, sto uh, story uh, initiative carried out in Algeria, where 
the project has trained a number of uh, stakeholders, of partners in Algeria, and then the partners have uh, carried out a number of uh, surveys uh, with their uh, uh, resources, uh, and they surveyed, surveyed an, an, uh, around 111 beaches located in nine coastal areas. So the, we have uh, very good uh, results in this uh, in, in, in Algeria, and this could be a very good uh, um, uh, success story to be uh, shared with uh, with all of you. Uh, talking about synergies with UFM labeled plastic busters initiative and the Interreg Met Plastic Busters the MPAs, uh, I can say that SWIM Horizon 2020 has been very closely linked with UFM labeled plastic with the uh, busters initiative and the plastic busters MPAs. Needs and gaps identified under the, the, the project were taken into consideration in the design of the Plastic Busters Initiative. The results and experience and the plastic, uh, of the Plastic Busters MPA have been also presented and promoted in all uh, um, related acti activities related to plastics and uh, marine litter. And the SWIM uh, Horizon 2020 experts, uh, Tommy, uh, particularly uh, have joined uh, myself also we have joined also number and contributed in, um, in a number of technical meetings and workshops organized by plastic busters MPA. Now back to uh, the West project uh, we have a number of uh, we have a number of bilateral national activities and we have a number of regional acti activities. Um, with the support of MIU and uh, SCPRAC, we have a number, uh, we are supporting uh, Algeria, Morocco and Lebanon in, uh, on marine litter uh, monitoring and particularly on uh, macro litter uh, in the uh, sea surface and the sea floor with an assessment of the amounts, types, composition and sources of uh, marine litter and then the identification of management options to feed into their uh, action plans and strategies. And we do also provide capacity buildings, uh, building for targeted professionals, um, uh, for informed decision makers on how to properly monitor marine uh, macro litter and on operating, uh, oper operationalizing best practices uh, uh, on marine litter measures. We do have also a number of regional activities and we have an activity that is under conceptualization on microplastics. So, about synergy with plastic busters and PAs, yes, definitely relevant resources and case studies of the plastic busters and PAs are integrated within the design of the US activities from the TOR development and then, of course, later on during the delivery of the capacity building and the technical assistance activities. The results uh, and exp experiences of plastic busters are also presented in US activities on marine litter and, of course, uh, was experiences and case studies have also been uh, presented in the Plastic Busters MPAs uh, events and, and meetings. There was a question about the, uh, the, the, the actions uh, in, in Morocco, I think. I think, of course, through uh, WES, we have uh, a good, uh, we, we, we provide this platform to have a good access to the results of uh, um, MPAs results and vice versa. Uh, then talking about the uh, single-use plastics, uh, we do we have activities in Lebanon, in Jordan, and uh, about EPR. We do have also activities in Morocco and Egypt. For uh, the single for, for the soups, we have uh, we assist countries in defining the ba baseline situation from the production and the consumption for selected uh, single-use plastics. These are uh, national bilateral activities in uh, in uh, the partner countries. And we assist uh, countries in the identification of priorities and recommendations for policy measures for the reduction of single-use plastics. We also provide uh, support for the uh, ministries of environment and other ministries, of course, in the de development of uh, specific policies to take actions to reduce single-use plastics, uh, action plans and policies, of course. And we have also um, some uh, uh, technical assistance uh, in Morocco, particularly and in Egypt, on EPR uh, applied to selected single-use plastics. In Morocco, we are assisting them in uh, PAT uh, uh, bottles, uh, designing uh, uh, the EPR schemes uh, there. We have also regional activities to strengthen the capacities on how to implement efficient measures to phase out single-use plastics. We have carried out, we carried out a number of uh, series of peer-to-peer uh, -peer and webinars with the contribution of uh, uh, peers from the MENA region. Of course, there was a, an opportunity for us to present 
the uh, results of the Plastic Busters uh, MPAs to share. Tommy was there. And by the way, I would like to acknowledge also the role of uh, uh, that Tommy has played in the in in in, uh, in in both projects as an expert as and as a coordinator and. Uh, as a bridge for expertise between the two projects. So the role of Tommy was key and important. Um, and uh, yes, we again, we, we presented the results of uh, Plastic Busters MPAs. Um, the results, uh, yes. Uh, so there was a, a training that was uh, planned, but unfortunately too, due to COVID-19, it was uh, did not happen. But of course, uh, we will, we hope for this to be, to, to, to materialize, uh, materialize soon. Um, we have been um, mandated by the European Commission to make a regional gap analysis on pollution uh, by plastics. We made in the last uh, weeks uh, uh, the survey on gaps at regional and national level across the eight partner countries. Of course, we lay as it were with, with all uh, the partners, the Mediterranean partners and projects. Um, try to uh, to uh, analyze to to make a survey on the pollution by plastics and, uh, of course, the awareness raising in the, in the region. And we have issued the pre preliminary uh, findings. The work has confirmed a series of gaps across all countries and across all aspects. Um, gaps uh, including legal and especially legal and institu institutional aspects. Gaps about infrastructure, skills and competencies uh, of involved sectors. Uh, and of course, uh, gaps uh, around information and education and awareness. We have also um, collected, uh, made, made a screening of all uh, initiatives and programs uh, running in the region on plastics. And we, of course, we are, we will share all the results with all partners in the region. In parallel, I would like also to talk about uh, about the uh, the um, assessment of case study, uh, studies and best practices on uh, on um, uh, the uh, waste reduction. Uh, and particularly on plastics, we have also an assessment. We will be also we, we are coordinating these activities with UFM directly, and we will be very soon uh, posting and sharing all the results uh, of the um, on on waste reduction, particularly on plastics, uh, with with the partners. So there will be a very good um, database and um, a platform to uh, for a cooperation for sharing best practices uh, in the region. So. Back to this gap analysis, uh, we will finalize the gap analysis very soon and we will prepare an inception report for a set of activities uh, to be implemented by late 2023 with, uh, with the West partner countries. And then, yes, here is, uh, this slide is to present the West's uh, expected impact toward addressing marine litter and uh, single-use plastics. Of course, we are looking to have a comprehensive diagnosis of the marine litter and soups uh, problem in the region, uh, data from uh, compartments, further co consolidation of existing data, etc. And uh, yes, propose a targeted marine litter prevention and mitigation measures uh, and with a contribution to the upgrading of national legislation addressing marine litter. Uh, of course, to have a trained and mobilized core of set a uh, core set of professionals and decision makers on aspects related to entire management of cycle of uh, cycle of marine litter, and of course we are looking to have to capacity to have uh, uh, to enhance the capacities of ministries of environment and other, of course other departments uh, in the uh, uh, southern Mediterranean region to respond to the challenges posed by the plastic pollution uh, waste uh, with emphasis on single use plastics. And of course, to to assist, to help, to uh, uh, countries to have uh, strategies uh, uh, for the uh, for the gradual ban of single-use plastics, of the reduction at least of single-use plastics, particularly in Lebanon, Jordan, and Egypt. So we will be also, of course, sharing all the results within the region, but also with the uh, with the, with the, with the projects and within the, the Mediterranean region. So this is very quickly the pre presentation of the West activities and the, um, uh, the synergy with the Plastic Busters. So for more information, you can visit the, web the website, of course, access the social media. Thanks, uh, thanks for your attention. Thank you, Anis. Thank you so much. And uh, I think that uh, 
um, this presentation was a concrete showcase of how uh, the so-called synergies can uh, take shape and form because oftentimes concepts like capitalization, synergies building seem very soft and very, um, how to say, not a clear cut. But I think that with your intervention and now with Stefania's intervention, uh, all of us uh, will sort of understand better how we can bring our different projects and initiatives closer together in order to consolidate the efforts towards tackling the problem of marine litter. So Stefania, I would like you um, to take the floor and um, present to us uh, the common showcase. Common, not with two M's, I think it's one, right? <laughs> two M. Thank you. Thank you, Tony. I'll share the, um, the presentation. Okay. Uh, first of all, thank you for the, the invitation and uh, um, also for this uh, interesting and uh, inspiring uh, meeting. I'm here um, as representative, of course, uh, of Common, but also uh, of um, Lega Ambiente, that is uh, an associated partners of Plastic Busters. Uh, and uh, the, the lead beneficiary of, uh, of Common. Legambiente is one of the most widespread environmental NGO um, in Italy. Um, Common is a, a, an NACBC med program financed project, and uh, it's a cross border project aiming the, at improve. Uh, the sustainable management of waste uh, to prevent marine litter applying to integrated coastal zone management principles in five pilot areas in three countries, Italy, Tunisia and Lebanon, uh, through participatory process uh, uh, that involve different kind of stakeholders. Uh, partners uh, are uh, um, Lega Ambiente, uh, of course, but also uh, um, the Mediterranean Agronomic Institute of Bari, the University of Siena, the University of, for Italy, the University of SUS, and the National Institute of Marine Science and Technologies for uh, Tunisia, and the NGO ANWAJ and the Coastal Nature Reserve of Tyro uh, for, uh, for Lebanon. Um, I have to say that uh, uh, a, a strong relationship uh, exists already exists uh, with plastic busters, uh, thanks to the presence of uh, uh, the partner University of Siena, uh, and and thanks to the, the labelization of uh, the Union for Mediterranean uh, for uh, for both projects. Um, Following the, um, the main outcome of the project, I'd like to focus the attention on, uh, uh, first of all, on monitoring activities in this, uh, in this field. Uh, the synergies are, are stronger, thanks to uh, the presence, uh, again, of University of Siena, because uh, um, the, the novelty of the monitoring strategy has been uh, uh, fully transferred uh, in, uh, in common. The threefold monitoring approach uh, has been completely absorb absorbed uh, in, uh, in common from, from plastic busters. Uh, but uh, uh, about this, uh, Christina uh, said um, <laughs> better before. Uh, so uh, I will pass. Um, over about uh, the, um, the involvement, the uh, participatory process that uh, um, is involving the local stakeholders. We are organizing uh, these local knowledge sharing forums uh, that are necessary to, uh, to the next steps. We are meeting uh, different uh, um, local public authorities, fishermen cooperatives, but also tourist operators um, and, um, um, and the general, general public, of course. Uh, we are organizing rank tables in the, in the three countries. Um, and uh, um, within these meetings, we, we are um, 
you are trying to identify uh, problems and uh, and gaps uh, in the in the waste management uh, um, but also to we are trying to, to collect to share best practices find common action uh, to take forwards and uh, um, understand sources and fates of litter in specific area that is uh, uh, a mandatory steps uh, to to take uh, to, to find measures mitigation measures to 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 fight marine litter uh, and um, the, the aim is uh, uh, of this action is, uh, among others, also to, to build a network of, uh, of coastal cities, again, uh, marine litter, uh, which will involve also MPA's uh, administration. Um, this is important because, uh, as said before, uh, the, um, all the uh, best practice and the, gu the guidelines that uh, uh, Plastic Busters is uh, focusing on, uh, we think that could be transferred uh, and, and used uh, um, also in, uh, in common project. Um, that there are many uh, activities uh, that that we are also proposing to uh, during the, during the meetings, like uh, uh, for example, cigarette by, by butts free beaches uh, or the um, adopt a beach um, scheme, but also the promotion of reusable system. All measures that you mentioned uh, before, um, and uh, also experience is like soup free um, hotels and and, uh, and cafe and uh, I, I can add the bathing facilities and um, all these initiatives I think that uh, um, we could uh, uh, integrate in uh, in our in our work that we are pursuing also because we will develop guidelines so uh, of course we will be very um, um, aware about uh, uh, the, the guidelines you are you are developing, and uh, I'm sure that uh, um, we we can integrate and and make synergies also in this kind of activities, um, real activities, both in MPAs area uh, and in non MPAs areas. Uh, again, um, we are working also uh, with the um, CTAR to rescue centers, um, and uh, and as said before, uh, there there will be uh, the, an international workshop for uh, CTAR to rescue centers, and uh, for sure, uh, um, thanks uh, um, to to our partners, uh, the methodology is developed uh, by thanks to the the plastic busters work will be uh, presented and um, uh, and proposed uh, during this uh, this international workshop that we will organize within common uh, activities and um, we have also uh, this is also as Legambiente, of course, but uh, also in uh, in common project, uh, the our our awareness campaign, in particular, Club de Med, that um, is uh, promoted also by MIO, uh, that is our um, oldest campaign of collection uh, involvement of citizens and groups uh, in collection uh, beached litter, uh, beached waste. And uh, um, um, we are we have launched uh, thanks to Common of also a, a campaign dedicated to to tourists in particular and uh, and tourist uh, facilities. Um, again, we um, with these uh, uh, activities uh, within these activities we are um, promoting. Um, ah, participatory science uh, activities, that is the, the beach litter monitoring, um, uh, the beach litter monitoring, 
and uh, um, also in this case the methodologies will be adapted and uh, will be um, um, will be in line with, with those proposed uh, by, by by plastic busters and that are already in line with the the one proposed by the, by the European Commission. Um, thank you for uh, for the attention. Uh, I finished and uh, I I remain at um, your uh, availability. Thank you. Thank you very much, Stefania. Thank you so much also for. Um, clarifying how uh, both projects are working uh, hand in hand. And um, we will share with Magali some reflections on that. But before doing that, we would like um, to share a question with our participants. And um, we would like to see whether and who would be interested in building uh, synergies with uh, Plastic Busters and PAs. So if you could kindly uh, respond to the question that you can see in Slido, already some participants have responded that yes, uh, they would be very much interested in building synergies. And uh, just to prepare you for the next uh, important question is to indicate the acronym of the initiative that you are engaged in order then to reach out to you and uh, have uh, bilateral discussions on how this could be done. Um, Plastic Buses at this very moment in time is uh, entering in uh, full swing the um, capitalization uh, phase. So it is, uh, now it is the moment for us to start reaching out to other initiatives and trying not to, to establish a two-way communication and a two-way collaboration and a two-way flow of information and knowledge outputs. So it's not just about um, the other initiatives uh, capitalizing on what Plastic Busters is doing, but also Plastic Busters capitalizing on the knowledge outputs generated by other relevant initiatives. So I think that uh, we have 20, more than 20 participants expressing their interest to build synergies. And um, Thus, now I would like to move to the last question of the day, where I would kindly ask you to write the acronym of your initiative in order for us to be able to do a mapping exercise on the initiatives that high, have high potential to build synergies with Plastic Busters. So don't be shy. Okay, I suppose MedPan through the MPA Networks project. Marles, okay. Perhaps while um, the participants are filling out the, um, providing the response to this um, question, maybe Magali, would you like to um, read some of the questions posted on the chat. Obviously, we cannot respond to all of them. Yes, so yeah, in, in the chat, there were uh, several uh, questions. Some of them were already answered. And uh, there's, uh, well, few that remain unanswered. So uh, one was about, uh, well, the publications. I, yes, scientific publications no, that um, uh, are coming from the activities uh, implemented on the plastic buster. So they would like to know if there are already some uh, publications. Uh, and um, there was uh, another question uh, that was related uh, uh, so to the model. If, if plastic buster partner can recommend a model to assess marine litter, <clears throat> Sorry, uh, from uh, secondary sources. And uh, so as example, uh, stakeholders from countries and uh, desktop research. And the last one uh, that was uh, also asked and that remained unanswered that was about uh, 
uh, if we uh, initiative some, uh, initiated some studies on the analysis of microplastics in uh, marine organisms such as uh, sea turtles and, and seabirds. Okay, thank you, Magali. I think that the right person for answering these questions is Christina. So, yeah, Christina, indeed. yeah. Uh, the floor is yours. <laughs> yeah, the floor is yours. I try to be very, very short, obviously, uh, concerning publication. Uh, we have uh, at the moment already three publications uh, produced from the consortium. One uh, was at the beginning of the activity concerning the bioindicator organism and the threefold monitoring approach. Another one is concerning the um, uh, exercise, uh, intercalibration exercise for the detection of microplastic uh, in sea surface and sediment. And the final one is, uh, was recently published uh, concerning the uh, um, harmonized methodology to detect the presence of microplastic in uh, uh, fish and in mussels. And obviously there is a lot of work that we are doing at the moment on the different marine protected area already present to two conference and so on, but we have to finalize most of the analysis. So we hope in the next month we fully publish uh, several papers. Concerning the, the models, uh, we strongly believe the, the model approach will be extremely important uh, on several points. The first one is uh, to define the sources, obviously. Uh, but um, it's very important also in order to identify the presence, for example, of hot, hotspot area, not only in coastal area, but in uh, pelagic area. That is be uh, one of the habitat of several of these uh, charismatic organisms. And uh, uh, the model approach will be also extremely important in order to design uh, the uh, sampling activity and we experiencing on this. I don't remember the third question was concerning the, uh, concerning the, the studies on the analysis of microplastics in uh, sea turtles and seabirds. Uh, okay, yes, that is a very interesting point. Uh, we are working um, in this uh, field uh, mainly in the Pelago Center because unfortunately in uh, the other area we have not collect uh, in uh, turtles. Uh, uh, sample, but the seabirds, and obviously that can be done in two way, uh, stranded organism, so dead organism, and even uh, we can explore the feces. The feces, uh, the screta of these uh, endangered species can be a very important uh, sources of information. We are working in deep in these and also in try to found correlation between the presence of macro microplastic in the feces and some biomarker in the excreta. So there are a, a, a lot of work are around this subject in the Plastic Buster Consortium. Thank you, Christina. Thank you very much. Uh, we will take a closer look to all, to all the questions after the event and uh, respond to this also in written form so we can have a more elaborate and more precise reply. Uh, in respect to the question that I shared, I saw that uh, there is a lot of um, interest in building synergies with the Marles project and the BMED initiative and uh, the Blue Network. And uh, also interest was expressed by MedPan and Medsy Cities. So we will make sure that we are going to reach out to you after the end of this um, project. It's a, a good solid pool of projects to begin with um, and uh, with our capitalization process. And uh, now I know that we have taken too much of your time. I would like to ask uh, Magali and then Irena to share their final thoughts and uh, to wrap our event up. Thank you, Magali. Yes, I will be very short because we, yeah, we are indeed a bit uh, delayed, but uh, I think that uh, yeah, today was a very good occasion not to explain you the concrete results of the project so that you can now have a clear uh, idea of possible synergies. So thank you for suggesting some uh, interesting initiative or maybe also organization where we can partner no, for the capitalization phase. So this is, I think it was an initial workshop and uh, we will uh, definitely uh, follow up. So thank you everybody for your active participation. Thank you, Magali Irena. 
Thank you, Tommy. And uh, from our side, also many thanks to all today's speakers and many thanks to all participants in such a big number. And also now we are hoping to see uh, each other of us live in Dubrovnik is uh, pandemic situation will be better until September this year. Thank you, Irena. And in fact, I would like to say that we have high expectations from the event in Dubrovnik, where we have also, together with ANIS and the West project, uh, we have been already uh, getting the necessary approvals to bring also our colleagues from the West working in the South in Croatia. And uh, with Christina, uh, we have been uh, discussing that this event, if it happens, is going to be fantastic, as she would say, <laughs> simply because the emphasis will be on obtaining hands-on experiences. So the idea will be to spend as much time on the field, uh, putting, um, applying the different uh, harmonized monitoring protocols. So something to look forward to, and an example of how the different initiatives are working together, and hope to um, communicate with you very soon on a bilateral level in order to define uh, additional synergies that can be built and strengthen this collective effort in addressing marine litter in the Mediterranean. So thank you all very, very much for being here with us today and hope to see you soon in some other forum. So have a nice rest of the day. Bye-bye to all. Bye-bye.